first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace, peace. We're back once again with Dr. Eileen Bay. And um, tonight we're going to be going into the commentary concerning Brother Polite and Sarasota City debate in which that happened right here, the National Black Theater. As a matter of fact, that's where I'm at at this very moment. Um, Brother Roz and Todd, um, Brother um, Todd, you know, Sister Roz is putting it down. And um, we get ready to um, get into the information in a few minutes here. So just hold on a sec, and um, we're going to try to find a um, place where we can actually get down. All right. So, we get ready to get into it. Got a nice little quiet spot where we can actually get in to what took place this past weekend. As a matter of fact, it was this Sunday, December the 9th. And um, before I get into it, um, we definitely want to give a shout out um, to several brothers that's passed away within this past week. And that's on uh, one, is um, Malay Salams, upon my man, Prince Uriel. As well as also Malik Shalom Bay. Both these brothers, real powerful brothers. Brother Malik Shalom Bay actually was a member of the United Washington or a national of the United Washington. Um, we recommended him several years ago. Real positive brother. So we definitely got to give shout outs. So, let's get do some of this commentary. Um, 
All right, what we're going to find out is that everybody has their own different perceptions of things. The topic between Salazar Seti and Brother Polite was basically is the white man the devil or have we become our own worst enemies? Well, both of them had their points. Interestingly, um, it was really intense. Also, as a matter of fact, um, you will find that Brother Polite point was basically coming to a solution, wanting to deal with the solution, and his solution was economics or coming into some type of economic, um, you know, dealing with economics, I should say. Um, Brother Sarah Sutton said he's, um, stated basically that when it comes to economics, let's look at Rosewood, let's look at um, Black Wall Street, you know, let's look at these particular things in which that took place. Um, as we know, concerning Black Wall Street, it was bombed. Over 600 businesses destroyed a whole city, Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, destroyed. You know, out of, you know, out of basically, out of envy and jealousy. You know, businesses are laundromats, banks, grocery stores, markets. We had it all. Bakeries. We was mayors, sheriffs, lawyers. Very educated, doing our thing, because we were doing import and export. And obviously that was interfering with the economics of Wall Street. So, of course, at the behest of the elitists, through their puppets of the KKK, or the Ku Klux Klan, um, they put forth these planes in which that bombed over 600 businesses. The whole town was destroyed. The whole town. And so that was SETI's um, science on that. Well, even if we do economics, as Polite stated, how are we going to protect it? That's a good question. Excellent question. And that's what we have to come to the conclusion of because that's part of the nine battlefronts in which we often spoke about here, in which that comes from Dr. Nelly Fuller and his student, Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, who wrote the ISIS papers. Um, they dealt specifically with the fact that war is one of the counterfronts that we will have to build against. So both of them was right and exact. We need economics, but we need to be able to protect ourselves as we grow. So we need a militia or a military force. The Nation of Islam have one called the FOR, Fruits of Islam, the Moral Science Temple, um, Inc., Incorporated, um, had what is known as the Mufti. Um, even the House of Prayer up on the Father Divine um, had um, his um, guards. So this is something which that you will have to do, that as you grow, you will have to be able to um, protect. You need a security team, you know, or something of that sort. So they both was correct. There's no doubt about it. Another interesting point in which that Brother Polite pointed out was the fact that within the genes, called gene conflicting, or conflicting genes, in which that he stated that, let's look at Henry Louis Gates, who was 50% so-called black or African American. Let's look at him. And because of these conflicting genes, um, he's confused. And that, and based on this conflict of gene theory, that there's certain genes in which that can 
deactivated or turned off based on particular frequencies coming from the food, the water, as well as also the music, and well as for those who are less than 50 cents. You know, so called African American. And the individuals look just as we do, but certain genes can be turned off or on based on the environment and based on the foods and based on the water and based on everything else in which that they're taking in. And therefore, um, these so called white genes can be activated. In other words, to become, they might have been dormant, but now they have become active. So now it goes back to the theory of, like W.B. Du Bois stated within his book, The Two Souls of Black Folks, in which that basically he was um, saying that that was the battle between those who were mulattoes anyway. So, you know, um, that demonstrates something in which that might have to go definitely more in depth. I thought that was probably the most interesting part out of the whole debate personally. Um, by Brother Polite on that part. And not saying that is right or wrong is something that we definitely need to um, go in depth with because I remember back in the days that even Dr. York put forth that the lighter you are, the more tendency there is for demonic possession. And that is even shown if you read any of David Icke's book, books such as The Biggest Secrets or others, he states the same thing, is that white people, being that they basically lack melanin, which is the feel for justice, that they have the tendency um, or the propensity in order to be possessed by demons from the first and second overtone um, levels of the astral plane in which that is referred to as um, reptilians by him. Actually, these demons... Um, as they are referred to as. And, of course, we go to the Eddie Mon of demons, we will find a whole different um, wording for that. That's something in which that Brother Tahuti brought out during his um, half an hour um, um, speech prior to the debate. Um, Brother Nasser Tahuti um, was there, and um, he brought out the fact that the word demon um, is taken back to the word diva, you know, which is the Sanskrit version, which that means goddess. You know, and that word demon was used in order to demonize the female or the Holy Spirit essence, which symbolizes the Kundalini, so that it can be suppressed by the patriarchal church known as the Vatican. So he has a new um, information coming out, a new tape, and a new, hopefully it will be a book um, soon. I told him that he needed to write a book on this because um, um, the brother is devastating, you know, and he's highly underrated. You know, but Brother Natural Tahuti um, broke it down, you know. So, um, some other points in which that was brought out was the fact that um, Sarah Sutton said he spoke about Dr. York. And he showed how Dr. York changed his doctrine over the years. But Dr. York always said, you know, especially in the New Covenant days, that I gave you what you wanted so you can take what I have to give. So basically, there was things in which that he already knew, but he had to submerge you within the various religions so you can get a greater understanding, overstanding, and understanding of those particular teachings, such as Christianity, Islam, Judaism, etc., so that no one can come to you within any of those so-called monotheist belief systems and have you believe that they are the only ones in which they are right and you walk away and not question anything in which that they say. I thought personally, being that I went through that school and not being biased, I thought that was excellent because I never got caught up in the mythical characters known as Adam, Jesus, Muhammad, or etc. I understood it. You know what I'm saying? That if one culture can make them white and another culture can make them black or another culture can make them Korean or Oriental, that they could not have existed because everybody is seeing that particular image from their own perception. So it had to be more so of a concept, symbolism, 
allegory in which they dealt with something at a spiritual level and not just at a morality level. Now, of course, these biblical stories have plenty of moral, morality um, or morals based, you know. Uh, we can see Adam and Eve, that story. Adam um, denied Eve or blamed Eve. Well, God, you gave it to me. That means he lost and fell, his, you know, fell from his space. He had to get cast out of the Garden of Eden. He had to because he lost his godhood. So he lost his connection or union with God. He debased himself through his thoughts. And his thought was that, God, you gave it to me. She corrupted me, therefore I'm corrupted, but I blame her for the corruption. Then, of course, the story goes on that Eve had to pay for the consequences for her actions for listening to the serpent. So her and the serpent was in conjunction or in cahoots with each other in order to deceive Adam. Now, what's the now that's the morality of the story is stop placing blame. Be responsible and accountable for your own deeds, behavior, ways and actions. But let's analyze that story. Eve is in cahoots with the serpent because Eve and the serpent symbolizes the mother goddess principle known as the Kundalini. Hence the Holy Spirit as she becomes known as within um, the New Testament, as well as her uh, anthropomorphized character known as Mary, the mother of God, which is nothing more than a composite of or set, which is Isis, and her name is Mary, M E R I, instead of you know, what became known as M A R Y. So, or set, Mary. Um, is where that story is derived from. And the composite character is that of Mayat, or Set, Nebhet, and Heru, or Het Heru, as well as Newt, or Moot. All of them combined is the story of Mary, from being a virgin, which is, or Set was virgin, and hence the story of that magic conception that no man touched her, which even in the story in ancient Egypt, um, the phallus um, did not impregnate her because the phallus was not there. The phallus was made of clay by Tahuti, and she transformed herself into a bird or a ba, the spirit or the soul, the spiritual soul. And she lit herself upon it and drew forth the essence from out of out of um, Osar, when she found the rest of the 13 pieces, of course, we know the piece in which that was missing or that was supposedly eaten, which that story was symbolic, meaning that your desires for lust and, you know, for lust was, was taken from you, just like the angel Uriel hid Jacob in his thigh and took his desires from him and made him to a sin to God. Hence, his name became known as Israel. Rahel, which means to ascend to God in Hebrew. So this is where this story comes from. And so um, it's the same thing with Osa and Oset. Osa is the father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Same storyline. Oset is the mother of heaven. It's Mary, the queen of heaven, or the queen um, of not just the heavens, but also the mother of God. And of course, Heru is where the Jesus story is derived from. And Heru symbolizes the awoken soul aspect, or Saul symbolizes the sleeping soul aspect. So Saul symbolizes one, the soul in which that is sleep, Within man, as we know that the soul is half asleep, as well as the Kundalini, which is all set, she too is also half asleep. That's why you must awaken her first so she can go on her journey through the seven caves, symbolic to the seven chakras, in order to find all sort and resurrect him and put those pieces of the puzzle back together again, known as those 14 pieces of all sort. Symbolize actually as the decalcifying of the pineal gland 
And the word pineal is the same word as penile, which is the head of the penis. And actually, when it becomes engulfed in blood, it looks identical to um, the head of the penis. And because of the reflectors on the um, pineal gland, 144,000 around the pineal gland, or these same like particles, magnetic particles, when the Kundalini comes up, it shines and brightens up that cavern called the third ventricle, or called the cave of Brahma. And once you, if you go to Nutricides by Dr. Leila Africa on page 15, he shows you the brain blown up to the equivalent size of a car and hovering over the third ventricle, in the third ventricle, a fluid-filled chamber is a galaxy-like cloud, and it hovers right over the pineal gland. So that galaxy-like cloud from the side looks like a UFO. That is called Nubiru, the planet of the crosser. All right, Zachariah Sinch made you think that it was something external or that it was just external. It is internal. This is intergal um, intergalactical travel, all right? That's what energy goes into. You don't know, just don't go out. It goes in first, and then it's projected outward. Even in Qigong and Tai Chi or Reiki or Pranic Healing, all it is is actually taking the energy that is external and drawing it internally. And in the death process, is in the reverse manner. The internal energy is pushed up, projected inward, and then reflects that, you know, and reflected outward. In other words, as above, so below, as within, so without. So very good points was made during this lecture. Um, Brother Polite um, came back and counted um, some things in which I've said about Dr. York, and I'm going to get more into what was said in a second. But he showed where Abigail Washington um, came back with, as well as many others, matter of fact, almost all of them came back and stated that the stories in which that they um, said about Dr. York were lies and that the child molestation never took place and that um, they was told to do so by the FBI. They was coerced by the FBI as well as by Jacob York, the son of Dr. York. Now, I had a problem with the fact that his name was even named Jacob because the word Jacob within, um, Jacob within Hebrew means supplanter. Now, you can look up the word supplanter and you can find out what that means on your own time. I won't go into it. But put it this way. Um, when someone place a um, plant within your camp, what is it in which that you think about? Infiltration. Betrayal. Just like in the story of Jacob bet betraying his brother Esau and stealing his birthright. by taking a blessing from Esau, who was actually the firstborn, and giving it unto himself, by tricking the father who was blind, by wearing a wool, um, by wearing wool on his arms, you know, to make his father think that it was his brother Esau who was hairy. Now, what people don't realize is that the story of Jesus actually comes to correct that and that's why Jesus is not after the order of the Levites. He's after the order of Melchizedek. Because Esau in the Old Testament is actually Esau or Esau or Jesus within the New Testament incarnated in a sense as far as in the story of Plato. So therefore, um, it doesn't matter about so-called God's chosen people as far as the Jews are concerned because we know that by Revelations, they say that it is some who say that they are Jews, but they are not Jews. They are actually a synagogue of Satan. And this is why it was mentioned within Revelation, the second chapter and the third chapter. Because they're perpetrating a hoax. This is what is going on. So, um, what Cyrus Sue said, he said about Dr. York, he was trying to get into the information dealing with. Um, in particular, 
um, a book called Saddam Misinterpreted, all right, in which that basically Dr. York was saying that um, that we shouldn't be looking at um, gays and beating them up and so forth and so on. And, of course, it went into more detail. You had to get the book. Said he was not able to finish that part because um, he was being stopped by other polites um, and his camp in order to not to go into that information. And this is when the you know this is when the intensity comes in at you know and what happened. And when we deal with the intensity, you know we're dealing with you know. Uh, feelings and emotions. Brother Jack told him, or Brother Sutek um, told him in the beginning, he was the narrator or the commentator for the um, debate, you know, as well as also the questionnaire. But he told him from the beginning that, look, it's going to get heated up in here. There's going to be things in which that you're not going to like and which that each other may say, so do not take it personal. But that's exactly what happened. Now, I told Brother Seti, um, you know, that I knew what he was doing. I said, I see that you spared him from personally attacking him, so you seem to easier talking and you attack Dr. York instead. And he couldn't really say anything because he knew that's what happened. I said, I see it. I see what happened. You know, because he said if you anyone who watched the tapes or the previews prior to the debate, he was going to get at um, Brother Polite about plagiarism from Dr. York's information you know, for those 70 some odd books. But he didn't even get into that. So he played Dr. York's information and showed how Dr. York changed from the white man being the devil, the devil, to being um, actually um, no more wins the race and racism. Okay? Now, you got to understand what was going on. He was trying to remove the hatred portion or the anger you know, from those in which that began to find out the truth, you know. But that's kind of hard to do when you find out this type of information, this type of truth, how we have been coerced from out of our birthright and our nationality has been stolen, you know. And that was the 90s, Dr. York, you know, and prior. Um, afterwards, um no more when the race and racism that the Dr. York who was trying to deal and eliminate the hate aspect from the doctrine. And I don't see anything wrong because um hatred on any scale is a um it basically is quote unquote um detrimental because it deals with an aspect of fear. And if forced to spiritually grow and progress, we can't have fear and none of fear attributes. So, you know, I understand what he was doing. However, um, the name of the debate was, is the white man the devil? And Dr. York did say, being that he is Brother Polite's um, teacher, as well as, you know, all of those who came up through the Antar, New the Islamic Hebrews, or came through the New Covenant, or came through... Um, you know, the Holy Tabernacle Ministries or the Tents of Kedar or the Tents of Abraham or one of the cases, all of those who came through the AEO or came through the um, the um, Masonic Order, you know, all of us, you know, have aspects of the teachings from Dr. York and all of us have perceived his information in different manners, in different ways. You know, I, for one, always took the fact that what he said is that don't trust me, check it out. And I always went there research and checked it out in other books and from other teachers. So I never got caught up in just him as being a personality. You know, in other words, I was able to separate the message from the messenger. And even though I don't like what they did to the messenger or what has, you know, or what he um, confessed it to, even though they stated that he was beat, beaten um, to that point, but Sarah Sue said he made um, a point that they would have to have killed me, you know, um, for me to even have stated or shook my head, you know, um, that I molested those children if I didn't do it. 
um, that was a good point. However, um, we're dealing with someone who was 65 years old at that time already. And actually, Dr. York already told everyone for years that he only had 30 years in order to prepare us. So we're talking about that he started basically um, in the late 60s and actually states that he stayed in, in 1970. And then, of course, 30 years would have been 2000. You know, he ran his course. And so by 2002, they snatched him up. They kidnapped him. And they planted those charges on him. And it was FBI coerced. Now, for what people, what they didn't get talked about was the fact that he, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, Stevie Wonder, as well as Wesley Snipes, all purchased over 300 acres of land apiece. All right? And actually, the land wasn't up under Dr. York's name, literally. It was um, actually owned by nine different other individuals. Um, one was Brother Buns from out of um, um, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, his name was on there. But still, um, everyone seen or perceived that it was Dr. York's land. So we're just going to say that, you know, from that perception. But those four individuals was getting ready to build a small town there in Georgia. Dr. York goes to jail, molestation charges. Dr. Collin get killed, poison. Um, Stevie Wonder, you know, haven't really done a real, you know, a lot within the last 10 years as far as music-wise. So they somewhat, in a sense, silence him. And Wesley Snipes is in jail also for tax evasion or for actually not sending out a tax form properly. So just any old thing to get at them more. And this is what took place. So... um. I can say that Dr. York, I can see what Cyrus Swartz said he was saying, possibly about Dr. York, because everyone has seen the tape who have been part of the, um, who've been, in, you know, interested in this particular case of him shaking his head. He never said it, you know, he never said that he, he never said it verbally, and wish that within court of law, you have to say it verbally. He did it all through suggestion, by shaking his head, yes, or shaking his head, no. And that's not supposed to actually account in court. So obviously something happened. You know, the way it, see, the people can see the first part of when he was walking in court and the way he was shaking. And according to um, what the Nuwapian states, um, he needed his medicine in which that um, he has a throat condition in which that um, if his throat closes up, he'll suffocate. During that time period, you know, that's what was going on. And that's some serious stress. You know, that means he would have to have taken um, some type of steroids or some type of um, inflammation um, drug in order to keep that from happening. So, no, I do not believe those particular charges. However, um, there's aspects of Saros and Seti lecture in which that would have people to assume so. But when they start and go doing more in-depth study, they would find out. The same as I did is that there's something fishy about this. And especially when it comes to the fact that these four brothers was getting ready to build a city or a town, rather, in Georgia. So they was all going to have over 1,200 to 1,500 acres in order to bring brothers and sisters down to. Wesley Snipes is going to provide the security. Dr. Collett, of course, um, being FOI, you know, I'm pretty sure he's going to, you know, help train them also. You know, Stevie Wonder was going to help with the music and the spiritual enlightenment. Um, aspects, of course, Dr. York do what he does. You know, so 
that's that's a beautiful thing that would have happened for us. But instead, we see what took place. Now, I won't get into um, the more in-depth information. I want you to go and research and study. You know, for these issues amongst us won't keep popping up and not be explained properly. Because when you look at what these four brothers was getting ready to do, there's nothing on which that you can say in order to state that there was no conspiracy, in order to stop that from occurring. As a matter of fact, he was trying to um, put a highway through um, with... They were trying to put a highway through where um, the land was with Dr. Yorkino. And in a sense, the zoning laws stopped them. So um, the town's uh, council, that's where the plot came up, you know, with them to do so and with that sheriff down there. But you're going to do your research. All of this took place during the time when Dr. Yo first got down there in 93, 94, on up until 2002. Crazy, real crazy, yo, because um, this this would have been a, a beautiful thing and we would have seen that transpire. You know, we think that it was just beautiful with the pyramids. Just think about a whole city, whole town, a city like that. Kick out of money. Dis- um, dis- distributing our own products nationally and then importing and exporting internationally, the economics in which that would have been raised. That would have been our own Black Wall Street or Moore Street because guess what? All of them were Moors. And at the time, they all were stating they was Moors. Wesley Snipes said he was a Moor because he was studying the teachers up under the Dr. York. Dr. York was saying he was a New Wapian Moor. Dr. Collins said, I'm a Moor. Stevie already said that back in the 70s about the Moors. So he, all of them knew their Moorish heritage. You know, so it would have been a Moor town, you know. You know, so this is something in which that, you know, can't be debated on. You know, that aspect of what took place and what was getting ready to transpire cannot be debated on. This is a fact of what was getting ready to take place and transpire. But Brother Sadie did not point that out. That was not pointed out in the debate. However, I had to point it out here as being commentary um, of the debate, you know, being um, that was something that I've seen that was missing. I had to state this for the record, you know, on this radio show. You know, he also showed with Dr. York um, called Dr. Benedictine. And I remember when that happened. I was an Ansar, New Orleans Islamic Hebrew at the time. And personally, I didn't like it at that time when that was said. You know? But I know why, in a sense, because Dr. Bain advocated eating pork, in a sense, as being a black Jew. And that is something in which that also was not mentioned. But Dr. Ben, um, while um, Soros said he also took a, um, some clips from when he visited Dr. Ben in the hospital and asked Dr. Ben about Dr. York, and Dr. Ben said that Dr. York had, um, tried to have him killed. In other words, um, something similar to like what happened with the Nation of Islam and Minister Farrakhan um, calling for the, um, the death of Malcolm X. In other words, it would have been, you know, with an incident, you know, in, um, inside a riot of some sort. In other words, um, you know, the camp would have went out in order to do something to him, and that was wrong. But, you know, I understand Dr. York, at that time, he was, um, you know, we have to picture up all in the family and all of them together, they would still um, talk about each one 
publicly when we started shutting back. I did not like the way that the dirty, dirty laundry was being aired because I knew that it would come back and bite, you know, back bite um, the individuals. That's what somewhat happened with um, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Yahweh Ben Yahweh went to jail for 10 years, and actually, as soon as he came out, um, and actually, Yahweh Ben Yahweh is one of the um, brothers in which that Dr. York um, used to talk about also. But when I went in and I did an in-depth study on what he was teaching, he was teaching the Kabbalah and teaching you Hebrew and how to um, decode the Kabbalah information, which is more doctrine. Nothing should have been said about that, brother, except your less unify. Everybody can keep their own camp, but let's come with a treaty. And within the treaty, we say, look, we're not going to backbite each other. We're not going to air the um, dirty laundry openly into the public. If we have a beef, let's get behind closed doors. This is what needs to happen. This is what happened with Malcolm coming forth and um and supposedly the FBI agent um um informant, you know, known as Wafi Muhammad um came and told Malcolm about on the Belash Muhammad's um, you know, marital affairs and children, you know. You know, that was none of Malcolm's business to put forth in front of the world, regardless on what would have had, um regardless on what was taking place. Malcolm was wrong on that standpoint. But his letters was being um infiltrated. His letters was being um by the FBI. The FBI were taking the letters, um, rewriting them, and sending them to Elijah Muhammad in order to make things even more hotter. This is what has been alleged anyway. And this is the things in which they take place. You know, that's why communication always has to be open. This, this, I'm giving you solutions on things on how to not get trapped up in any of these particular things. You know, these um, um to get to the point of a Biggie Smalls or the Notorious B.I.G. slash Tupac um, East Coast, West Coast thing. Because if you read um, certain books, you will see that that's exactly what took place. The FBI and the police, local police, um, um, were all involved in both of those assassinations, along with the members of those particular gangs or whatever case in which that was going on. They knew. Tupac and Biggie both spoke about the fact that the FBI was following them weeks before the assassination. So this is, you know, some of the things which that is transpiring. And we have to really look at this. We have to analyze this, you know, and design a counterfeit so that this can never happen again. And through the treaties with each one of us, each of the particular groups, we can have always open communication between us. The heads can call on each other, regardless of what takes place in the lower ranks, and find out what is true, what is not true. And that's regardless on if they're listening or not. If they're listening and they see that you're communicating, then they have to go to a new plan. You know, in other words, the reason why it keeps working over and over again is because they feel like if it's not broke, then don't fix it. But with the way in which that there's so much technology out now, um, we will have to be able to come up with innovative ways of stopping these things from taking place amongst our people. We have to. We have no choice. We have to. We have no choice. So, um, those were some of the things which that was brought up, Brother Polite. 
um, brought forth a program of economics in which that can help with um, solutions. He brought forth statistics and grades and so forth and so on. Um, the problem with that was is that in both aspects, I put that so so he said he spent too much time on Dr. York, even though he was going at the foundation of Brother Polite, and I thought that Brother Polite might have dealt too much with economics, even though it was a solution. But it was not dealing with the topic at hand, and the topic was, is the white man the devil? And during the second half, Saros and Seti went more into it, and he showed that within the various cultures around the world, all of us, um, all the people, indigenous people, have the name for the white man as being the devil. You go to Africa, there's various names for him there. Australia, with the Aborigines, various names there. In the Orient, his name um, there. So in the Americas, South, Central, and even here. So we have all referred to him in some shape or form as being the devil. And this is this is globally, as well as also, um, this is what Cyrus said he also went into, was the millions upon millions and millions of people in which that were killed during World War I, over 37 million people was killed. World War II, over 60 million people was killed. And we don't even know during these of World War III on what is going on right now and it's been perpetual ever since the um, early 90s with Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, now with the CIA going into Uganda, or Rwanda, We talking about we know within Africa that was at least one million within Rwanda alone, over one million was slaughtered amongst the Hutus and the um and the Wats and the Watusis. So he was showing how the people have been killed around the world, all right, uh, from Africa, being taken from Africa and trying to be um, killed within Africa. And then, of course, with the Middle Passage, and then, of course, with the millions in which that was killed, um, that has been estimated to up at least 250 million, based on John Henry Clark's um, estimate. They say taken from Africa, and the people that they killed in Africa alone was over um, nearly 100 million, on which that Malcolm X spoke about within his own. Um, um, Afro history, Malcolm X on Afro history, in which he stated that during the Middle Passage, so we're talking about over one, um, over one, um, 100 million people was taken from Africa, and but then about 75 million um, died as part of the Middle Passage. Now, we know that they didn't have the technology as far as the boat in order to bring that many people. However, um, more so what Malcolm is talking about is what took place on the continent of Africa in order to, that was the battles in which that we had against them, in which that those 75 million were lost or died. And 25 million or so were brought here um, to the Americas. And the majority of them was taken to Brazil. And only about 650,000 was brought here to the United States, what is now known as what it is now known as. So, um, and of course, you know, um, the numbers, you know, fluctuate, and actually it goes to less than half, you know, to 12 million that possibly might have only been bought here based on the, on the Albion or Europeans' um, standpoint accounts coming from out of Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, in which that they have done um, research and, you know, um, and studies. Me personally, um, they need to show the boats because the problem is is that um, out of all the museums that I've visited up and down the East Coast and the British Museum, were, you know, we have yet to see boats of these particular trips in which they're supposed to have transpired. And knowing Albion and his um his behavior, he has a tendency of monumenting things 
and one of the monument achievements definitely would have been of him keeping um, the ships with the chains and so forth and so on as proof of his achievement that he conquered us. But the fact that there are no chains um, um, or boats um, in that manner shows that there's something fishy about the whole story. And so the Moors ask the questions, well, what is the distillation process for a four month, three to four month voyage? How was you able to transform sea salt water into fresh water? You know, how much water did you take on the trip for a three, four month voyage? If you had 200 to 500 so-called slaves based on the size of the ship, what was the food content? You know, how much food did you have? What was the process? In other words, you know, all these things have to be addressed. And amazingly, there's not many books written about that particular subject. There are books written on how many supposedly slaves that was bought here. You see the movie Roots in all of this. However, um, them having the technology and actually, and actually talking about a three- to four-month voyage being that a person can only go a month without food, you know, a person can only go two weeks without water, you know, they can, a person can only go three minutes without air, and talking about this is all on average. How did they um, accommodate this? You know, so these are questions in which that um, has yet to be answered by so-called said um, African or African American scholars. But these are questions in which that has been asked, you know, by various Moors. So this is what um, we come to um, the conclusion of. You know, this is what we come to the conclusion of. So these questions have to be raised. And as well as um, also, um, Sarah Sawyer said he was breaking down um, not just how many people that was killed. Um, and just based on that alone, we're talking about mass murderers. We're talking about even psychopathic or sociopathic serial killers. And we're talking about those tendencies. And when you study a psychopath or sociopath and their tendencies, and we've done the show actually on this information about po po police brutality and their psychopathic tendencies, if you go back and listen to that show, we break down perfectly about these individuals have no form of justice because they have no feelings concerning the matter. They don't even feel any remorse. These are the people that we talk about that are definitely the devil. Now, if you read African Origin of Biological Psychiatry, Dr. Richard King, he breaks down that 60 to 80% of the Europeans have calcified pineal glands. These are the individuals that have no feelings and can't feel towards another human being. They can't empathize or sympathize. Very hard for them to do so. Their feelings or the emotional body is not developed. And these are the individuals in which that um, are happen to be in the elite position. And these are the individuals that has the tendency of being possessed the easiest by these demons from the first and second overtone level of the astral plane. You know, so they're able to tap into the brain stem and attach themselves to the first and second chakra and control these individuals with their lust and greed and jealousy and envies and so forth and so on. And they love passing this bloodline along. This is actually what um, Dave Black is talking about. And of course they think that that's so superior, but yet they know that they're earthbound. They're trapped. This is why they're always trying to get technology in order to get off. But you know, technically, um, the universe is holographic. You know, if you get the book Holographic Universe by Michael Talbert, he speaks about it. But they keep trying to get off the planet but can't get, back, get past the Van Allen belt. 
and there's a lot of nonsense in which that is being propagated in which that they went to the moon, they went to Mars, not manded, unmanded, they're gone, but manded, they have not gone because they can't get past the Van Allen belt. They would die of cancer radiation uh, from the radiation from the Van Allen belt if they try to do so. This is um, even told to them by various science, scientists during the 1960s. And even certain scientists didn't even believe that they did it at that time in 1969. So this is the nonsense which is being propagated, and we can't keep falling for the hoax. We know that also that they have man-made UFOs. There's a book called Man-Made UFOs, 1944 to 1994, in which that speaks about Adolf Hitler, the Germans and them, um, how they had a um, UFO program or craft program. And this makes sense because um, in the 1950s, they brought them over to the Americas. Adolf Hitler supposedly died in 1983 um, um, as an artist in Arizona, according to um, Behold a Pale Horse by William Bill Cooper. You know? So these are some of the points in which that was brought up, you know? Um, Brother Jack was the moderator or Brother Sutek, as he's also referred to as. Um, he moderated the debate, and he did very well. As a matter of fact, he stopped a lot of things from popping off up in there because, like I said, it got intense around the Malachi New York issue, which they actually could have been crushed if the brother was able to, if Cyrus so said he was able to go ahead and read his commentary on Dr. York's teachings, you know, concerning the side I'm misinterpreted. And if it would have been metaphysically decoded, then they would have been able to understand what actually was taking place and what he was doing by eliminating the hate aspect. But it wasn't. So, therefore, um, it got into a lot of the beef. Um, it popped up, and um, it had to be extinguished, you know. Um, so I had to jump up. You know, he had to jump up and calm things down, but the um, Sutek had to calm things down. Um, a lot of things popped off. You know, even Nasser Tahuti had to, um, you know, tell um, the polite, you know, you know, not to do. Um, there was a joke in which that brother polite made that brother Nasser Tahuti, you know, and it was distasteful at the time as far as Nasser Tahuti was concerned. It was very distasteful as far as he was concerned, and. They was getting ready to get into it. So it was a lot of things that popped off. But luckily, we were able to make it through the lecture. The audience, you know, responded to both of the brothers. It was like a tennis match. You know, Brother Nat, um, brother um, Polite made good points. The audience stood and clapped. Brother um, Cyrus said he made good points. The audience would stand and clap. So, you know, in a sense, you know, the audience, you know, seen it, you know, and you know, I guess from the way in which I was looking at the audience, it would be a draw. Of course, you know, you have individuals who believe that Brother Polite, you know, won, and then you have other individuals who believe that Sarasso and Seti won. Well, that was the same thing with me, and Brother Sarasso and Seti. As a matter of fact, I even knew that most people want to understand what just happened between me and Brother Sarasso and Seti um, after our debate, and that debate was April the 19th, 2009, three years ago. Matter of fact, that was on my birthday. So, you know, for those who believe that Sarah Stone said he won because of his rah rah, you know, at the time, you know, um, but we talk about substance of information, the information which that was presented, you know, I knew when getting to the people's heads until five years down the line or so, because most people are caught up into sensationalism. But the thing was that there was not a lot of sensationalism at this particular debate. There was between me and Brother Sarasu and Seti, but he's definitely, you know, made great strides and is definitely changing and growing in his information. You know, it's a good thing, excellent thing. We chilled, actually, 
it was actually me, Brother Simon Sutasetti, Brother Sutek, Brother Sanetta, um, Brother Najat Tahuti, Brother Seville. All of us actually did a tape together. And so y'all definitely want to go and check that tape out when it comes. And uh, we was all, you know, enjoying each other and building, you know, and finding solutions. You know, Brother A. Rashid came um, a little bit later, and he dropped it. And him and Natural Dahoudi, you know, went real, they really went at it, you know. I mean, they was, they was going at it. They was going at it, you know, breaking information down. Is there, you know, God and the devil, heaven or hell concepts? I was just basic. I was just staying, you know, basic and just, you know, hitting cast with some common sense stuff. But they went in. They they broke down word, um, etymology, um, cognitive as well as other cognitive um, meanings of words. So I mean, it was it was excellent, you know. So y'all really got to check these things out. You know, these brothers are putting in the work. And they put their lives, they put their lives out here, you know, for you. You know, I mean, y'all don't realize how much it takes in order to, you know, present information. You know, and how much it takes in order to have to study and research for hours and hours and hours a day. In order to write books, in order to do block talk, in order to do, um, you know, um, lectures. You know, a lot of times it's not appreciated to the fullest. And it needs to be, you know. And Brother Polite's point was that, look at Dr. Ben. I'm not going to be like Dr. Ben. I'm not going to end up in the damn nursing home. And I agree. The Empress video really, I suggest on Turner Al Bay, she's in a nursing home. Dr. Ben is in a nursing home. Why do our great leaders who dedicated 40, 50 years of their lives and more of their lives to our salvation, our liberation, or in nursing homes. This is what is going on. And so I agree with Brother Polite. None of our leaders should be in no nursing home when they put in such as much work as 40 and 50, 60 years of their lives into this information. They should have family members you know, who want to take care of them because it's that much appreciated. Because they see the love in which that um, poured through them in order to try to liberate a whole people, not just, you know, to eat for survival for their own family, but to share their wealth of knowledge, information, understanding with the masses, their wisdom with the masses, it's something that you can do, you know, that's that's a beautiful thing we can provide for you, your wife, your children. But it's a whole other aspect where you can do the same thing for people. And that's not being appreciated. And that's one of the problems that we have in too, with the so called black community not um appreciating their own leadership. They do a lot of talking, but when it comes to support, it's not there. I can tell you, my wife and I had a bookstore, so-called black bookstore, cultural freedom bookstore, for 12 years. We got minimum support, free classes, 12 years, putting out this information, 12 years straight, free classes. And it was minimally Appreciate it. It was never overly appreciated, and it should have been. I have over 300 DVDs. I need people to start calling us and getting them, because I really feel that not many brothers put this information out like the way that we put this information out, as far as with the details of the words, etymology, the Edomite. You know. You know, so um these are things in which that needs to happen. All right? Now the debate between me and Sarah Sweet and Seti 
but something in which that was good, in which that I stated, you know, that at the lecture, I stated that I believe in um, the right to bear arms, you know, but I looked at the audience and I said, but are you all ready for that? You can hear a pin drop. For some reason, Cyrus Smith said he did come around, believed that Polite was trying to disarm the people. But that wasn't the case. He just didn't build from that aspect. He was just simply saying, you know, we can also do economics. In other words, what happens is that, um, it's like what I told Cyrus Smith said he didn't have, at our election, that Africa is our throne, but the earth is our home. So but we basically come to the conclusion of it that this whole thing has to be holistic. And even though Cyrus Smith said he believed that, you know, he beat me, but you go and ask, um, you go and ask Sarnetta. You go and ask Sarnetta, who they say won, as well as also who was the number one DVD seller years before Cyrus Smith said he stepped on the scene, as well as also who years after, who was still the number one seller of DVDs for, for um, Brother Sarnetta. And he would tell you that it's me. So it seems that people can watch me on DVD, get all my information, utilize it, write books and things from it, but don't give credit. So, you know, it's times when I should have 500 people in the audience and only have 50 because of promotion. And that is not right. Now, like, you know, we here in New York, and I'm the number one DVD seller for the last, you know, almost 10 years. You know, so this is ridiculous. This is where um, the problems come in at and the, division, and the, um, and the um, division between the brothers and sisters because it seems like there's jealousy or envy, and these are things that we have to move away from and move towards a collective um, unified movement, regardless on how much we want to see a debate, you know, um, I'm going to give you a good point on what, um, you know, Brother Kaba, um Kamehameha said, who is known as Booker T. Washington, um, we have to begin to start challenging these so-called white scholars. That's what Malcolm did. Malcolm challenged the white scholars. He went to Harvard University. He got on TV. And he challenged these individuals. He challenged them. You know, that that was a beautiful thing. You know, I've got the comment. He challenged the Europeans. You know, you see him battling the Jews, three of them. And by the time it was over, two of them was on his side, telling him that he was right. You know, he battled Anthony Hill. You no, know, one of the ones of the New World Order information. And like he said then, that um, Brother Steve Coakley and Lady Salon, peace be upon him, that, you know, that he did it better than um, the brother. You know, that he did it, um, um, that the brother did it better. Steve Coakley did it better than um, Anthony Hill. You know, you can see that one. So there's a lot. Um, so we, you know, we now need to start going towards them. We have done did enough with each other. You know, I know Brother Sarasso said he has. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, um, everybody wanted to debate him. Now, they wanted to debate me at first too. Brother Wesley Muhammad, his brother is also Brother um, Ali Muhammad, wanted to debate me. But I guess what they seen, um, the information, or I don't know what was said. But y'all can also ask Brother Sarnetta about it. But these um, debates between us never took place. So I can't tell you exactly what was said behind the scenes. But you can see the videos of where um, I confronted Ali Muhammad on the phone, as well as also where I confronted um, Brother Wesley Muhammad um, in person and we did the DVD. Now, even then, we still respected each other. But it was the fact that it was a challenge. And me as an Aries, I don't back down from challenges. 
you know, and even if I don't have all the information, like for example, um, me and um, Donella was talking about this. Um, so I tell my oh my lean was getting at me because I ain't give him saying I ain't give him the full title to the to the lecture. And I said, Sarah, you know you didn't give me the full title to the lecture. You told me it was gonna be called the final showdown to Cyrus and Seti on my lean day versus Cyrus and Seti. And then you said it was gonna be about the Moors. You did not tell me that the subtitle was gonna be the false teachings of the Moors Science Temple of America. You did not. Okay? So he didn't tell me. But after all these debates, like I said, that's good. We done did it with our own. All right? You see Nasr Tahuti um, versus um, Ali Muhammad, you know, on, you know, he's a black woman guy. You done seen um, Nasr Tahuti versus Wesley Muhammad. You know, so we don't see we don't had enough debates over the last three years. Now it's time in order to move on from the debates, um, at least with each other, and start um, debating these European scholars, said scholars, and getting at them. So this is the new um, incentive that we go after them. On my website, new website, www. DrAlimElBay.com, D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y.com. Y'all go there, check it out. So much information, I swear your heads. But www.DrAlim.com. Check it out. Now, we in a lot of debates with that website alone. But I put forth a challenge to the guys in which that was trying to, to the Europeans who was trying to get at Oshawa Kwesi and Ray Higgins. So, oh, and that's one of the other debates that I forgot about Pastor Ray Higgins um, on Wesley Muhammad versus um, Pastor Ray Higgins, another one in which that took place. So we done had enough debates amongst ourselves. Let's get at these Europeans. All right? So this is what um, is the agenda of the new initiative now that we need to be marketing. All right? Um, hopefully we can get to that. Um, petition Brother Sarnetta to um, start getting at that, promoting that, because if I'm not mistaken, um, the white guy or the so-called said white guy, pale guy, put forth the information that he wanted to challenge Oshawa Quake and, um, or back to Pastor Ray Higgins. And he was going to give them um, $2,000, you know. So that, that's that's one of the things that we definitely need to start doing now and move beyond. All right, based on the fact that I can't get into the studio in order to play music or to uh, answer questions, uh, based on the fact that, uh, once again, I am out of town and I am at the um um, Wednesday night class of Brother um, Taj and Sister Roz, um, Moore's classes, Moore, um, Moore's heritage classes. And um, so we're just going to continue enjoying ourselves. And what we're going to do is um, close out the show a little bit early if I can enjoy um, this information on which that they're dropping. And um, we'll come back in next Wednesday at 8 p.m. And um, y'all can have some questions and answers for me then. I hope that I'll be settled and I can pull up the computer and everything and we can go into it um, at least for a few minutes of any questions or that y'all might have for me um, for this, um, for talking about as a commentary on this polite and sour and city debate. And um, I guess we're going to go and go into it for a few minutes, like I said. So hit me up next Wednesday, 8 p.m., 
Um, we don't know we don't know the show title as of yet, but we'll get that to you. Um, we got some things that we want to talk about before we go. We have the United Washington Conference Cruise to the Pyramids 2013, March 21st through the 25th. We definitely want you to go. If you know anything about being indigenous, um, you want to know about your birthrights, um, you want to know about nationality, um, come on this cruise. Even if you do know and you just want to chill with the family, come on this cruise. This will be during the time of the spring equinox. And in Chesanisa, the sun comes up, the serpents, and reside within the center of the um, um of the whole um in the pyramid. Symbolized as a regeneration process, as the raising of the Kundalini energy. You have to come and check this out. Y'all got to be on the ship with us. You have to. So give us a call, 252-257-3588. That's 252-257-3588. Or give us a call at 252-767-5213. That's 252-767-2-5213. Give us a call if you want to go on this trip. Y'all need to go. You know, we're gonna be um there's gonna be lectures. I am I'm going to lecture. So y'all get to see me um go in and ask me any questions or go into any other additional information. You know, there's gonna be other lecturers there. You know, really gonna enjoy yourselves. All right, we also have the online classes, Hello Wings online classes, alternative healing. I wish that we have classes every Tuesday and Sunday. And the classes last three months, and it's five hundred dollars for the three months. And you get certified in Reiki one, two, and three. I wish that just ten years ago was ten thousand dollars for a person to even go through. And you get in all three certifications. Matter of fact, within three different styles: Ushi Reiki, Tibetan Reiki, and Shekel Reiki. As well as you will learn Qigong, Tai Chi. Pranic healing, astrology, numerology, in particular medical astrology. You also learn uh, reflexology, acupressure, irisology, dealing with the eyes being the windows to the soul. And these are the sciences that you will learn. Classes for that will start January the 6th. This January the 6th. So in about a month, a um, little less than a month, we're going to start them classes back. Give us a call, 252-257-3588. For those that want to learn the science of law, we got the law classes going on. That's going to resume. All right? January the 7th. The class is going to resume January the 7th after the so-called holidays, or holy days. That Monday. And those classes are three months or so at $500. And these are online classes. So please send us your, um, your email. The emails can be sent to healingwingsonline at yahoo.com. Healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G, wings, W-I-N-G-S, online, O-N-L-I-N-E, at yahoo.com. Healingwingsonline at yahoo.com. So email us, and we can send you um, the flyers, the brochures, whatever we need to send you for the classes, as well as also for the crews. All right? Please contact us. We need your support. I know how our people are. They like to wait to the last minute. CP time. But we always don't got to be color people. Okay? It's time for us to become Moors. They're proper now. So we can't deal with those times like that any longer. We can't wait to the last minute and procrastinate. We got to get things popping off right now. So hit us up at these phone numbers and participate and support us. Because um, 
this information can be spreaded. What people don't realize is that this information is all over the world. I've been to London, got called to Germany, lectured in Canada, you know. You know, so um, right now there's brothers who's trying to get us to the Netherlands. So um, we need to definitely um, support because this information is worldwide, it's global, you know. All right, we're heading out. Getting ready to go check out um, Brother Roz, um, um, Sister Roz, and Brother Taj um, information. Um, we're getting ready to say to y'all peace. And y'all take it easy. Come on back here next week, next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>